Okay. Test, test, one, two, three. Okay. Test, test, one, two, three. Let's see if we can test the sound. Uh, where is the damn sound? Ah, oh, the music was turned down a while ago. See how that sounds. Okay. Sounds. Why does it get stuck like that? That's weird. Turn that down. Close that. I guess I'll share this to a few people and then we'll get started soon. <laughs> and... <sighs> Shit. I was checking out the sound and it was kind of uh it was kind of bad when I was doing some editing. I'm trying to fix that right now. Lord have mercy. Get this here. Continue game. There, we'll stop right there. Oops, that's the wrong button. Uh, microphone's at an okay distance, I guess. And I'll just slap this in a few places. Voice acting, video, that's audio, self promo. And Place it there, place it there. I send for rhythm. I send it to fishy too. I like fishy. There's fishy. There's fishy. should be fine now. I can lower this and I can turn this little screen off and we should be good to go. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll send this to to my dudes. Eh. Eh. Okay, now we bought them. Uh, how's the music? It sounds like the audio is better now. I guess I could turn myself down a little bit too. Man, I didn't think I got that loud in the recording. Uh, 
Uh, of course, there's a dude just honking his horn nearby. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll record it too. Why not melt my computer? Why not? And open this back up again, because I'm silly. That guy's dead. Why does it take for time to pass in this game? Okay. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Hey, Jim. Hey, uh, can you let, can you let me know if the sound is all right? I uh, turned up the game volume and I turned down my volume a little bit because I downloaded the stream last night. Oh my god. My my voice peaked a few times. I did not like that. Oh, I didn't realize how low the narration was. So I bumped that up too, but we'll see how loud everything is. Uh, you can turn up. Turn up the game a smidge or turn up my voice a smidge? on this guy so you can hear the reading. Ah, my voice the man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and white okay. boots. His skin is marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. On his chest, a fading web of tattoos. The cargo belt used to hang him from the tree looks reinforced. Okay. I think we should be good. Uh, I was gonna wait another minute just to see if a uh, blender hops in. I'll uh, get started. Also, I got me some coffee. If I, uh, thank God. I also bought a weird pizza. Not weird, but um, I haven't had a normal cheese pizza in forever, so I got one of those. And uh, man, good pizza is hard to find. Like, and you can tell it's a good pizza when you get a cheese pizza and it's fucking baller. Like, yeah. It's just, uh, they put a little bit too much weird cheese on it. Not just mozzarella, they put like five other cheeses on there. And I was like, damn it. It's like, I don't know, like, good pizza has a look to it that I don't know how to describe. It's like the white with the brown and the yellow, like the little burn marks, but they're not burnt. It's like, it's like baked. It's obviously baked, but I don't know. It's It's got that look to it where it's like, yeah, this is going to be a good fucking pizza. Either way, pizza's pretty decent by itself, no matter what. Let me start inspecting some of these boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. Mac and cheese? On the pizza? Delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Possibly part of a larger set. Not gonna lie, I would try it. These aren't just boots, are they? are stripped off. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. The hell's the difference between a sabaton and a boot? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. Fair weather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. 
This is advanced stuff. Mm, yes. No, I forgot to put this on the side here. Perfect. Yeah, okay. Uh, but, uh, where's the rest of it? Probably scavenged off by locals. Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. <laughs> we should keep a look up for these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe mm. he'll know something. The sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form. Ageless and synthetic. The material looks out of place. It is. It's expensive. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabulary is deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. Hey Jim, one more check. Is the uh reading from like Kim and the narrator at a good volume? Because if so, I'll just leave it alone. How much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years of wages. Four years of wages, Jesus Christ, baby. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jim. Let's, uh, let's try and pull off the boots. They're worth this a fortune. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Yeah, better the sabatons dangle off the man's decaying form. Ageless and synthetic. How can you afford this? That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbour Company. But that's just hearsay. Mm. What's the initial report? Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. He's not actually sure of that. He's just being tactful. Uh, he's looked pretty advanced for a security guard. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air. Like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Hmm, sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Jesus. Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether. Like the scales of some ancient white monster, cracked and pearly. Hmm. I guess I'll back off. The, the cadaver slowly here. twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Yeah, what about the bell? Maybe we can cut The that. hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. Looks like a ratchet strap right there. Industrial strength. The can used for tying cargo to lorries. Like in a circus. When the circus leaves town and they tie a black spotted giraffe to the wall of a carry pen. The fuck kind of what? Like, uh, like in a circus, we're transporting black spotted giraffes. Uh, no, more like in uh, Harbor, like the one just east of here. I get a sense they used whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. Uh, they sure want him to stay there. It's not merely polyester, it's still reinforced. See these lines? This is where the wires run. I see rabbits for more than 20 strands. This makes getting him down much more problematic than I had assumed. Maybe the dock workers did it. I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? No. You feel like it was something else. But what? I feel like it's something else, bro. Yes. It often is. This bell worries me. How'd they even get him up there, bro? 
A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. Did they climb up? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the bell to close the buckle. Mm. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt, limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. Ah, uh, fuck, how do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's down. Uh, the cadaver slowly twists again. on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos, tattoos? And an intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. His corpse is marked by stars. What will mine be marked by? Alcohol and heartbreak. Uh, national pattern? Of no nation that I know of. If anything, it reminds me of religious illumination, last or penultimate century. Men who live harsh lives often turn to innocentic worship. But which one? I see no trace of a humanoid figure. Hmm, we're missing something. I agree. <laughs> Two of my favorite things. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Ah, I'll just let him do his thing. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. Instant and color? God damn. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see mm -hmm. streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. That is... a man being hung. Jesus, it looks worse now. In case we need it. Uh, what do we need? A cool machine, bro. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> there is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. What do we need a photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Uh, can I have the photo? Sure. Just don't lose it. He's hung in two ways, bro. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by, <laughs> his mouth mute and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. Uh... Hey, Wonder. I have something I need to know, Of course. Man. You have uh, questions. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. Wiki. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Wow, what a nice dude. All right, preliminary examination is over. Let's get him down. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting it. Mm. This is a toughie. We could saw the branch. Climb up there and saw the branch? Uh, maybe there not. has to be a less risky way. With less falling down of trees. We shoot him down. Yeah! Bang bang time pig! Shoot his head off! <laughs> How? Just shoot the belt. The bolt will break it. It absolutely will not, officer. <laughs> That's not how physics work. It will you merely cut one thread loose. Don't talk to me about physics. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. No 
will miss. The pigs will miss, Kuno. The lieutenant is undecided. On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other, it's an awfully stupid idea. Take, take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst that could happen? I'll blow his head off. That's pretty bad. Take it! Take the shot! Take the shot, Kim! Yeah, take the shot! Kuno wants some of that shit! Silence. With his elbow sharp, the Lieutenant <laughs> unzips his jacket yeah. and produces a lightweight <laughs> firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. He's got a fucking musket pistol? Like, what the fuck? Securing it in place. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. Um, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say nothing. He's gonna the kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. He feels bad about it. About his eyes mostly. Just having bad eyesight. Probably from a young age. Whatever you do, do not console him. That's another word I've never heard before. Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? Do it again. No, we are lucky <laughs> as it is. We didn't break anything, and the victim remains uncompromised. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do us any favors with that. Yeah, what well, now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. Uh, I should try it. It's bad as it is, us shooting firearms like punks. <laughs> Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. <laughs> they only have one gun! This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, Banani Poika, take it and shoot yourself in the mouth. Yes. A yeah, cold of piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground Come on. and your left hand supporting your gun arm. Sure, come on, man. You can fucking make it. Oh, I didn't realize that happened. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? At least you won't miss. <laughs> Maybe I will, dumbass. Just realized the fucking zipper on my pants broke. That's not good. Uh, the red check cannot be retried. Ooh. <laughs> Point the gun at Kuno. <laughs> All right, close your left eye first. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the noon light as the corpse slowly rotates. Look, he's crying. You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? Hmm. <laughs> no. I, I really want it to work. I don't know what I can do to make this better. Um, and I coordination. What if I? Nah, it's probably gonna miss anyways. Mm. Bucket we ball, please, God. Ah, shaman in the arm. A plume of smoke erupts from the barrel. Your hand goes numb from the explosion. 
With your ears still ringing, you lowered the weapon to see what happened. You missed the belt, but hit the corpse straight in the chest. Bits of ribcage protrude from the skin. No blood, only a murky sludge dripping down his belly. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking cry! I knew it! What a molko! Uh, it's definitely your weapon, Kim. The armistice is sufficiently precise, officer. Especially at close range. It's not the gun's fault you can't shoot. It's your pig hands. Uh, pigs don't have hands. They have, like, fucking hooves or something. Kuno has hands. Kuno can shoot that shit down for you. Give a gun give the gun to the kid, he could shoot it down. <laughs> oh my god, we're not giving you a gun, kid. That's preposterous! What are you a fucking owl? What? We still need to get him down somehow. <sighs> by the way, the way I didn't want us to, <sighs> by asking the harbor for help. They have the tools and the men. If they put him up there, they can take him down too. Uh, how do we get inside the harbor? From the gates, by negotiating or fighting. I'm unenthusiastic about fighting. Or we can try to find some secret third path. It's an ugly door. Uh, fuck it. What a waste. Okay, I got a point. Um... There's like... Hmm, I don't know what to get. Hmm, hmm, hmm. There are a lot of good options. Maybe composure, because I gotta fight the fat fuck with the cross eyes. I don't remember what would help in that, but that's like a boss fight coming up. You know which one may open up a check you need to pass. Uh, drama is logic? What? Ever, ever, ever art. Yeah, that dude. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I guess I could hold on to the point. I'll just come back to it. Uh, so tracks. Empathy, empathy. Uh, the pain thresholds awarded a door. Ice cream maker, heroic. <sighs> what a day! What a fucking day! Uh, you know what? I kind of want to be empathetic. Get over here, Kuno, you little shit. Fuck this Kuno, okay? What's going on? Is an ungovernable youth on your crime scene, thrown around like you don't have enough on your plate. You feel a sudden surge of self-pity coming on. Get your snout out of Kuno's ass. You should give up, Popo. You okay, Kuno? That went wrong. He took it as a compliment. Kuno does a- Ugh, god, I am not passing any fucking checks this game, what the fuck. 
One of these days. One of these days. You see us? No. Leave. Fuck. Let's get the stupid goddamn flashlight off. Is there any thought thingy, Majigis, maybe? Uh, an intricate web of blue lines. The pattern still kind of has an ethnic feel to it. Catch For you to discover. You've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone close to the victim might know. Hmm. Damn it. I need to get better clothing too, because there are clothings that are giving me negative uh, stats that I really don't fucking need right now. Like those. A hat is cool. Okay. I guess we're going to the harbor. I know there's a secret way, actually. There's a secret way somewhere into the back. I don't want to talk to the Giga Racist, and I refuse to fucking accept that asshole's line of thinking. Like, I'll punch a child before I, I start saying some real fucked up shit. An Jesus. inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. Fuck it, I, I keep losing my rose. May as well try again. <laughs> because it's nice and orderly. Well nice. laid pallets. Easy on the eye. No, there's more to this. You get this strange feeling. Yes. Hard to say. It's gone now. Feelings pass, you see. I actually did that in my last playthrough, and uh, he respected me for it. The little bastard. Uh, man. I guess I will go to the harbor. I might start a fight and die. Don't know what I'm doing. Just gonna try. Hopefully I don't die. You there, let me in. Oh, talk. Bastards! We have a right to work! And the law. Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. Yeah, that's fine. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work! Right to work! Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Yeah, I got questions for you. Maybe you should ask them the questions. Like, why we're not allowed to make a living here? Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. So do we, Scott. Mm. What's your goals? We were promised work. We'd be in there, working, if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. Ah. Uh, Main you... gate's locked. Would take heavy ordnance to bust it open and try to get in through the secretary's office. Doors locked. The guards blocking the way to the access panel. And I don't mean the scrawny mess punk either. I mean head measurer, or whatever he is. Hey, Starman. Why don't you go arrest them instead? I'm sure they've done plenty of criminal shit. They have that look. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home, at least for now, if you can't get in anyway. No! They will give up eventually. Or get drunk. Leave the button unguarded. Then, we charge.
Oh god, this is not gonna go well. Scott? Uh, I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, <laughs> you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here? To the wild north? Come to see the strife? Uh, look for assistance with the dead body situation. Body still hanging in the tree? Hey, that's a rough pickle. Can't help you with that, sorry. I'm not really an admirer of dead bodies. Might be someone else from the Union can render assistance. Uh, let me through. I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a grantor of passage. The passage grants itself. Beneath the jolliness, he suddenly seems doubtful. That's simple. I just walk I in. Walk right past Measurehead and go in. Who's yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini Supremacist is there. Walk right past him. Ugh. Then press the button to unlock the door. Then go past him again, and you enter the arbor through the office. Esta. It doesn't seem like it's gonna be that easy. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure head in a physical confrontation, or you could convert to a Semini Supremacist worldview. Or, hmm, maybe it actually is completely impossible. Yeah, it is. Sure. <laughs> can you give me some money? Sure thing, my friend. I can help you out. Uh, I can try to catch it. The coin narrowly slips by your outstretched fingers and falls to the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to throw it like that. It's a thing we harbor folk do, passing around cargo and such. It was not meant as provocation or ridicule. The boy Adero stares at you with respect, then gestures towards the trickles of blood adorning your clothes. Right, always glad to help out the RCM. We're on the same branch, you and I. Humans, I mean, not slithering scabs. I'm here to investigate murder. Murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. Uh, maybe you want to help me solve it by telling me who did it? Of course, policia. It wasn't me. You can rule me out. Easier that way. He <laughs> didn't do it. It's the truth. Uh, well. Time to punch a dude on roids. That won't go bad. Not at all. He's a commie. See, I thought this dude was a fascist. Or no, he's the super racist? I'm not sure. This dude's, uh... He's not good. Your buddy betrays your degeneracy. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Don't say anything. Size him up first. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? Hmm. It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm Sandwich. You are <laughs> not in danger because you are not a threat to me. I'm gonna puff my chest out. <clears throat> what is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? Merely standing up makes you sweat profusely. Your breathing is erratic. Your own heartbeat in your ears grows frantic, and you feel your blood pressure rise. Stop it! You are embarrassing yourself in front of this woman and your pedomorphic friend. Maybe I can make him cringe so hard he lets me through. <clears throat> this display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct, but it is a liability here on Battlefield Martinez. Jean, look, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave.
We need, uh, we're, I'm the police. We need to get to the harbor. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to al -Ghul. You reek of it. An invisible sword of al -Ghul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Need you to take down the dead body or let me in? No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the ham sandwich race is waning. Show him the ham still got it. I think the ham sandwich Ray still has it in him. Willingly calling yourself a ham sandwich. How far <laughs> the Occidental Aplo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy race theory and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But what? now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. <laughs> Our father's wars world building goes crazy in this. It looks like it does. Um, this about man to... is not budging. Let's hope his superiors inside are more cooperative. About the push him out of the way. Come on, I just need to move about 20 centimeters back. Hmm. <laughs> hey, listen. Yeah, I um, we tried shooting down the corpse, and I accidentally shot him in the chest, so we're uh, we're kind of fucked. And I've missed every single roll so far, so I am I'm a little tilted right now. I'm gonna push him out of the way. Fuck it. Ow! <laughs> that is right. You should leave this stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street, and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. Jesus. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. Uh, you serve the Union, aren't they, White? Oh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. What the fuck am I listening to? There must be some friction there. He's keeping it well hidden, however. Yeah, but you still serve them. How does that factor into your life? Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital. Something your race, nifistic communists, never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Hey, Jam is a mysterious fourth thing. Jam. Individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs? 
They actually got it from Disco. Offshoots of the Zemini's people invented Disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. <laughs> it is a shame upon my race. But what is done is done. It is what it is. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. That'd be wonderful, man. I could enter the harbor, you could take down the body yourself. What you need is to come to terms with extinction and never get in that dead body <sighs> down from the tree. What do you think, Kim? I think this racist is better than the last. But the next racist will be the really good one. <laughs> I didn't know there'd be another one. There always is. Race is reality. All right, I'm gonna try and roll a natural twenty. Uh, get Ben. Oh. How did this happen? Your little fist is in his giant hand, and he's squeezing it. It hurts. You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate alcoholic. Get bent. Your fist cracks in his hand like a ripe apple. Pain shoots up into your brain as he's twisting it more and The words to the song have changed. Say, I am a violent drunk. Kill me. Your hand twists in his grip and the pain blinds you. Still you press the words out of your swollen mouth. Good. Now leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization any further. Just call the cops gay. By the way, where do tattoos me? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. We still need to get into the harbor. We need help with the tree situation. There must be another way. Oh, that was embarrassing again. This whole day has been nothing but embarrassing. God, I hate. What is I'd it, appreciate it if you didn't force us into situations where I may have to shoot random civilians, because that won't get us anywhere. I'm not even sure the one bullet my chamber holds would even prick that hook. Okay, I won't do it again. Let's think of something else. There's a secret way here, and I can't remember how to get there. Wait a second. The roof of the whirling, whatever the fuck. Down. Down. There we go. Okay, maybe... I vaguely remember. I think we can maybe jump the roof? Or something? I'm not sure. I'm gonna fall and bust my ass. I already know it. I need drugs. I need drugs to soup me up so I can fucking do shit. Just keep busting my ass. Up the stairs. Uh, is this the right room? The door is closed. No, that's not it. It's this one? <sighs> Maybe here? Nope. Not here. How the fuck? Alright, you. Give me the keys to the fucking roof. Can I help you? What thing? It's, uh, the union. Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. 
He hates the Union, but grudgingly recognizes its power over him. So he's directing his frustration at you instead. Retaliate. Uh, let it go, you're above it. It's a shame you gotta suck up the Union to stay afloat. I don't. I'm simply providing a service, or really facilitating the offering of services to paying customers, and it doesn't matter. I don't have to explain myself to you. Yeah, that's fair. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. Yeah, how do we find them? We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry. Even men on strike. You glance at the clock on the wall behind the manager. Huh. Why is anyone at 1600? Good question. They're probably getting drunk or protesting something somewhere. Or laying low after the, you know, lynching. <laughs> Reminds a lot of people, Squidward. Yeah, I can see that. Whatever he may feel about you. He can't miss the opportunity to throw you a look of what he assumes is sheer understanding. Go with it. Yes, I think I see. Yeah, yeah. The Union guys think they're untouchable. They probably fucking killed that guy or something and now think they can hide out till it all blows over and it's fair weather again in Martinez. Hmm. I have a feeling we'll make their acquaintance sooner or later. Eh, what what? Else? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. Uh, uh, karaoke. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. <laughs> Let's go, I guess. Hey, what is that? Oh, it's a door. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. Push on the door. The door does not budge. Where's the store lead? You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Uh, I want to know. Eccentric. But okay, I suppose we could look into it. As a side investigation. He's not bothered by your eccentricity. He seems genuinely intrigued himself. Yes, many side investigations. Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. Touch the, the cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Old cobalt paint. Uh, can I pick this up? Honey! Uh, who's this dude? Who are the you? The thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's Court. Ah. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words oh. you can make out are Garanzi and Quebec. It must be his name. Garanzi. Garanzi Quebec. Sounds representative. So you got some time for questions? The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. What's behind the door? He looks up at you, then looks away quickly, shrugging and muttering something to himself. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. Hmm. Shit. No leads, no successful roles, I got the shit kicked out of me. What a, what a fucking day. What a fucking day. Who the fuck are you? No, oh, you don't say anything. A colorful piece of plastic is dangling from his carabiner. Hmm. Makes your fingers itch. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. What 
Well, time to fail another check. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. It's a dock worker's ID, doubling as a shift card and a job Ooh. permit. A young, able-bodied man stares back at you from the photo. Santiago S. John. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You've just picked up some magnesium. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. 72% chance of success. We should be able to pass this, you would think. You fumble with the spring-loaded gate of the air, but to no avail. The dangling items refuse to come loose. They just jingle in an ever louder manner. What did I need to roll lower? Like fucking sleigh bells. What are you doing? You're gonna get caught. Stop finger fucking him, officer. I'm responsible <laughs> for these oaves and their stuff. Even sleepy there. You stay on this bartender. Fine. To be honest, he's correct. Police officers generally don't go around appropriating possessions from people. It was just an idea. Come on. Really fucking 72% chance. I'm just not allowed to win today. I, I, I fucking guess. That's cool, I guess. <laughs> Fuck, what do I even fucking do? I can't get the damn... Wait a second. Maybe I could pry the things off of the boards? With the pry bar? I do have a pry bar. Inconspicuous pile of the roofing material. It's nothing. I am very frustrated right now. Is there a way to get up there? Doesn't look like it. Yeah. Maybe I could talk to someone in the office room. You know, it's like if I if I have like a five to ten percent chance, it's like yeah, sure, I'm I'm gonna fail. I'll I'll still try it. You know, it might be funny, whatever. But like hitting a seventy-two percent chance and getting fucked anyways, that's just not cool. That's that's fucked. God damn. Can I just shoot him? Can I just shoot him in the face? That'd be cool. No? Yeah, right. I guess I'll go exploring and I'll try and level up again to get the perception to break that fucking wall down. And I have $10. Nowhere near enough to spend the night here. God, I'm gonna die. This is, uh... This is really scuffed. What's that? <gasps> A plastic bag! We can collect bottles. <laughs> yeah, boy. What's that? What's that? This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubblegum, rendering oh. the machine permanently inaccessible. Hey, poor little bastard here. Hey, poor little guy. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. Trash bag. Plastic tear. Bottles, all right. Cans. Oh, Kim, move out of the way, Kim. Okay. 
bubble cap, here we go. Okay. Yeah. That's this way. There are more bottles. Yes. <laughs> okay, we get out of the way. I need the bottles. Was that a bird? It's a bird. Well, that looks like blood. More bottles, yes. Hmm. Hmm, what's that? Blood, that's paint. Lady, you spilled some paint. Don't call me Piggo. You're so rude. I've just done horrifically bad things recently. Hey, lady. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for Hep C. What? That's a very specific thing to be tested for. Uh, I am afraid. Yeah, start with the blood type. Go from there. Go where? Accosting a minor? Listen to your partner, pig man. Keep your grubby hooves off little old ladies. She's grown frustrated with her work and welcomes the opportunity to challenge authority in other ways. Uh, what do you keep looking off to the side about? The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Hatred, disgust, it's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That is on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Who the fuck is Probably she? the wild pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a mm. professional negotiator, though. I have the mm. feeling you should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Watch your... Blah, 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 blah. Can I open this door? A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. The door rattles against your knuckles. The door rattles again. Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. Is the police open the door? <laughs> the police? Everyone knows the police don't come round here. I'm not, I'm not joking. No. I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Backyard door? There must be another entrance to the east. Cab, tell her we're real policemen. Madame, I assure you, we are real police officers. There is no reply. Fuck. Okay, time to negotiate when, uh, while I wear... Wait, does this give me any negative uh, benefits from the bag? Mm, doesn't look like it. Sweet. I'm gonna negotiate while I have a bag full of bottles. Because I'm poor. Let's negotiate, lady. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. 
What does the L stand for? Baton, my maiden name. Oh. Well, I actually am. What is that? Um, I meant you, the Revachol citizens' militia, the police. <laughs> Give us away. Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. <laughs> what is implied here? That you're a drunk? I'm not drunk. I'm a police officer. Of course you're not. It was only a joke. Don't shake your hand. I'm glad to see you here. She is unfazed by your rudeness. Probably chucking it up. To local custom. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation, and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. You know, money. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition, but she appears helpful. Hmm. Yeah, it's your money. Is what you want to say, but it isn't that easy, is it? Why not? Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. Very nice fabrics. Why, yes. Tucked away under that sturdy green raincoat, almost rustic in its simplicity. A silk shirt and matching scarf around her gentle throat. While dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry. Wealth and all its possibilities. Yeah. Now look at you. You misery-clad simian. Barely able to tie your own laces. Your armpits are lakes. A scythe of booze precedes you. Your hair sticks to your forehead and your underwear feels uncomfortable. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too... I'm... Um. Or I'm too ashamed. I'm not ashamed. Oh, but you are. Too ashamed to ask this person for money. Too scared to belittle yourself in her eyes. Those half precious stones of Erdenin. Oh God, the lieutenant is here too. Do not dishonor the force. As I was saying, if there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Can I have some money? Voila! Yes! You're doing it. Uh, help me. I'm poor and I need money to keep living. Can I have some money, ma'am? Of course. How much do you need? She's surprisingly nonchalant about this. Could it be that she somehow knows more about your predicament than she's letting on? I need a hundred real. That's a good sum. Not too small. Not fantastically large. She removes a few notes and hands no them shit. to you. Whoa, whoa. Did you see how easy that was? Ask her for more. Toot toot. Train to money town. Nay. No. Twud. Be dishonorable, and mine honor is mine in life. Can you eat honor? Are you an honorvore? <laughs> Give me a break. So, I hope I didn't just bribe you, officer. It may not be technically illegal under the Emergency Act, but still. Uh, I'm an honorable policeman, one of few good men in Russia. You're right, ma'am, that donations are permitted under the Emergency Act. And seemly as it may be, as long as they are properly logged with a precinct. Which he most certainly will do. Now, how else can I help the RCM today, besides supplementing its salaries? <laughs> Man, that worked out way better than I thought it would. Uh, tell me about the strike. Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. 
What if I want to hear about trade secrets? First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. The octopus? I will slay it. Good luck. It's only kept in place by the vested interests of half the civilized world, including your own. What the man means is that the Emergencies Act and the RCM both get their authority from the coalition government. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. Well, what is your role in this? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines counteroffer. Okay. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Oh, Measurehead. Yes, Jean-Luc Measurehead. Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. Okay. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he granted the union in prior negotiations. Hmm. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere and banners. What did they say again? Oh yes, every worker, a member of the board. I uh, don't know, it seems like they have no idea about I like it. Then you might also like their other slogan. Demand democracy. Yeah, that's a good one. Personally, I don't think it has the same pizzazzo as every worker, a member of the board. There we go. Uh, personally, what exactly do you mean, though? What demand? It's quite simple, you see. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about what? About anything, really. It needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. <laughs> the king's dead. Long live the workers. That may well be. It's not up to me to decide who is king, but as negotiations go, it's not a swell start. Uh, what are we going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was... Call me Manana. This checks out. Did you put the scabs at the gate? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the union refuses to? If they were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not right now, at least. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you. At a later occasion. Uh, uh, tell me about Mr. Clare. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, 
It's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. <laughs> really? Of course not. Everard <laughs> is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. Say nothing. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. He has a twin brother? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does. And when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. <laughs> it's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. Wait, what? What about the union itself, aside brother? The Daybarders Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The brothers Claire came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but... I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. By the way, all, all, every worker should be uh, a part of a union. And you know, your opinion, detective, if I may ask, I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs Union is? Uh, it's basically a socialist mob. Thank you for being candid. Sadly, Wild Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades. However much you feed the wolf, the wolf always hungers. Yeah, but then again, you guys uh, are stealing from your workers, literally. Uh, I can understand why they're getting violent. Anyways... Election. I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Oh. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Extortion? Indeed. The company suspects foul play. But there's nothing they could do. It was a union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. What happened to the Guma? Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? Fuck off, midget. <laughs> Go on to his shorter statue, you see. Okay. Not cool. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. Sounds like usual aggressive posturing. So I need... Of course. How else can I help? Uh, do you know something about these photos? Show her the photos. That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. Do you know something about the tattoos? Better not tie the fourth day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. Uh, you seem smart. I need someone to give me a load on this reality we're in. This reality? Just give me the, just give me the lowdown. No, but please. A little context. We're not in such a hurry. Got so drunk I forgot literally everything. What? <laughs> and we went in a three-day event. Oh, a supernatural event took place behind your head, within my head, on alcohol. Such an acute encephalopathy. Just doesn't seem possible. Surely you're joking. Don't be faith, madame. He functions perfectly well. He only needs a low down on all of reality. We may be <laughs> here a while then. <clears throat> Ask away, officer. I'll help however I can. All right, we're in. I know these all look good, but begin with the first, okay? 
We're in Martinez, baby. Baby? A casual term of endearment popular among the 50 plus crowd. It's a disco holdover, pay it no heed. I'm a disco holdover myself. <laughs> Aren't we all? What is Martinez? Mayonnaise? Martinez is a district of Revachol. A very small district tucked away near the industrial harbour. North of the 881 and Jamrock. Hmm. You would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. It has uh, its charms, just not this time of year. What sea is it? It's not really a sea. It's the Bay of Revachol. And the bay feeds into the ocean. Are we near the ocean? Yes. We're on an island in an ocean. The world's largest body of water. The Insulindic. Vast, lukewarm, and unknowable, flowing in and out of sight. Uh, tell me more about Mary. I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once before, as a teenager. Not a lot has changed. There are ruins, a terminal, fishing boats, reeds, boys with boxy shoulders. A brief spike of longing in her upright body. The dots under her eyelids shake. This place used to be a province. A worker's resort before the city swallowed it and the artillery did its work. The reeds are the real star of the show here now. The further down the coast, the wilder it gets. You were here as a teenager? Yes, I was slumming it with some girlfriends of mine. We had boats and... Don't hold it against me. The boys certainly did not. <laughs> uh, what's the name of the island? Caillou. Imagine Caillou, a pebble. The bald child. A smoothed over pebble amidst a great blue sea. Misshapen, cracked. The cracks are the river Esperance. We're in the delta of this river on the sixth branch. The Martinez distributary. Hmm. It is clear this pebble is of enormous value to her. Uh, what's uh, this Revishol. thing? Revishol. Revishol is what you call a city. Kind of city is Revishol. A great kind. As if it's self-explanatory. Beyond patriotism. A fact. What makes Revishol so great? History, detective. They built this city to resolve history. Our part in it, at least. Our centuries. Uh, 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 who built it? The nations of the Occident, or migrant workers from Seminine and Il Mara, depending on your creed. What about when? In the DeLorean century. 380 <laughs> years ago. That's a car. Why did this resolve history? They say it's where the terrible questions of our time will be answered. The tensions are highest, the fault lines deepest. By that I mean... Conflicts. Ideological conflicts. The stuff of men. What do I hear? We are standing on a fertile, self-sufficient island, able to sustain up to 200 million people. Jesus. In the middle of the Insulindic Ocean. The world's connected tissue. It's where the money is. So we're in an unimportant part of an important place. So we're pretty much the center of the world. So we are in an unimportant part of an important place. I think it's fair to say so. Martinez is about... 22 kilometers from the center of the world. That soldering iron is the bank of the world building. The bottom floors are Insiacom. Coalition government, Insulindian Mission Command. Looks at the sea. Silence. She lowers her hand. The water, the light. It's as though you're seeing it for the first time. There is no recognition. Only the immensity of the sea and the cold radiating from it. I observe the large body of water. Cold. She observes your eyes scanning the horizon. Then breaks the silence. Slowly. Hmm. 
This is one thought you need to complete. Where are you? Was there something else you wanted to know? I remember something about a lowdown. This has been informative. Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure my memory impaired partner has many more questions to ask. Might I suggest not asking them all right now? Ma'am, Monsieur will be here later too, and tomorrow. Isn't that true, ma'am? Absolutely. My commitment here is long term. Mm, all right, I'll continue later. It's better not to eat all your candy at once. Indeed. I'm always at your service. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Uh, we'll do one more, I guess. Uh, what times are these? These are unimportant times, Detective. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. Hmm. Late for what? For the big time. What's the big time? The revolution. Uh. It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a real kerfuffle. Uh, who got the mineral rights? The liberals got the mineral rights. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. How did they win it all? They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Everyone else got shot in the head, remember? We. She's one of them. Of course. Who was there to surrender to? To foreign intervention. The coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. Oh, you said the liberals already took everything. The liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The coalition took the ground. <laughs> the ocean, the laws, and the people. Oh. What about the coalition? The coalition of nations. Grad, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Oranje, and Sur la Clay, the armed center of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. There is bitterness in her voice, tempered with understanding. She is critical, but ultimately understands the cause. Moralist? The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. Sounds kind of... kind of normal. At least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now, the coalition government. Hmm. This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. Just technically, practically as well, but I've heard about these people. A devout man of the center. Hard to come by. It's good to have someone who takes a moderate approach to head shooting. In your line of work, I mean. Yeah, they are what life. they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet come. Anyway, enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Um, is it a white check? That means I could try again. What is... Think of something close to you. Six kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs. Junior officer Chad Tilbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, You heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, Emil. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. We always do. What am I? You? You're an officer of the RCM. This abbreviation does it stand for? It stands for Revachol Citizens Militia. What is a Citizens Militia? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachol, Detective. Yes, 
We are the Revachol Citizens Militia. Is that defective? Yes. That means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the Twilight of International Law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. Mm. What do you mean? The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the Emergency, Wayfarer and Aliments Acts, three pieces of legislation keeping the city in a, let's be honest, laissez-faire stasis to the benefit of foreign capital. All three are good to know when we are out policing. Basically... Am I the good guys? There's nothing basic about your role, Detective. It's true that the RCM keeps everything the way our seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. Yet, on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. Aww. The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachol in the 20s was hell, especially on the west side of the river. Gang warfare, a botched privatization scheme, a nuclear pile meltdown. They called it the International Zone because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace where the coalition failed. A true blue citizen's initiative. They will never forgive you. That's somewhat of an exaggeration. In reality, ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Ravacholians get to keep the peace in Ravachol, and the coalition doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> anyway, sorry to intrude. Please continue. Yes, Lieutenant. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police. The only legitimate law enforcement authority in Ravachol. And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I'm here to help. Okay. It's all Glad now. to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? Yes. Of course, Detect. Enough of that. I feel like I've been talking on this boat for a fucking minute. Who's Tommy Lee Hami? Map information incomplete. Acquire a copy of the city map. Ah, shit. Well, good news. <gasps> Bottles! <laughs> yeah. I am a bottle fiend, bro. I'm just out here looking for bottles. Give me your coins. What's this? Oh, yeah, there's a back part of this place I forgot about. What's this? Oh, wait, what was that? Yes. <gasps> yes. Why is there so much magnesium around? Like, the people here are like magnesium fiends, just right? hiding it everywhere. What is in here? There must be another way into the building. What the fuck? Why was that so loud? What? Uh, what's this? What's this? A loud door? <laughs> yeah. Reaction speed? Reaction speed? Frederick. Health. Health is good. Uh, uh, fuck it, go in the basement. What's in the basement? It's locked. Fuck. What is that? Okay, maybe this way? Can't get involved in this. Who are you, bud? Hey, you bud. see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. 
just want to know what's going on here. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. I really need to talk to you. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Uh, who killed him? I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Uh, did I? No, not you. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. Ooh, what kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. <laughs> Makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. You don't have to work. You can just spend time with pals, watching rugby and drinking beer. Did he see something? He doesn't reply. Gesturing, no, with his cigarette. In the neighboring windows, you can see faint reflections of his silhouette, all from different angles. You tell me your name. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez? Good local name. Let's go with that. Well... No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Come on, stay. Time to bring out your secret charm. Tears and begging. Show him your emotional side. Throw yourself before his very feet like a dog. What? I thought higher number was... Oh, critical success. Okay. Why does it say medium failure, though? It says I succeeded. What? What? I succeeded. What? What? So, two ones is a critical failure. Two sixes is a critical success. I have two sixes. It says critical success. And it says failed at the top. I don't understand. Uh, please don't leave me. Trash? Please don't go. I'll even stop smoking inside. <laughs> Listen, I really have to go. Good luck with the investigation. I'm gonna fucking Google that real quick. Uh, critical success, but fail. Disco Elysium. This role is just for show. You're covered in the plasma pheromones. You're guaranteed to pass. And if you aren't, you're guaranteed to fail. Uh, inevitable fail. Red check in the game. Okay, that doesn't make sense. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. Okay. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. There has to be a way of getting inside the building. Let's go check out the door near the pier again. Once we found the way in, we can ask around for his apartment. <sighs> Well, the game hates me. Hello, child. Are you trying to sneak up on me? Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. What? Then why are you sneaking?
sneaking up on me like that. Eh, stupid kids are stupid. What's on the wall? This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Eh, I'll try this again later. Fuck it. You have no clue. So many walls. Bah, 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 bah. I'm gonna collect more bottles and make some money. I don't even know what I'm gonna buy. I just know that I need money. Money, money, money. Whoop. Trash can? Trash. Give me the trash. What's in here? Money. I'm doing so good right now in money. What's that? Bullet holes. It's kind of weird. Hmm. Hello, person. Trash. I'm the trash man. I guess I'll talk to the old dudes. See what they're up to. Old man. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? You are a man with a fork in a world of soup. I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. Okay, ball time. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. Fuck it. Grab the ball and show them how it's done. Did I fucking fail again? On the 83%. This felt wrong. Wrong like touching your sister's breast. You threw your sister's breast. Mon dieu! Good job, officer. That was an excellent throw. So am I supposed to get above the number or below the number? I said plus two. I don't know. Why did it feel wrong? Your muscle memory knew what to do and went for it. But there were gaps. Oh. It felt like you were going for a thrust or a lunge. There was definitely gonna be jumping. Maybe you scored a point, but this is a fiasco. We had more spectacular what happened. What are you talking about? You just executed a pretty much perfect petong throw. Oh. How are you ever going to get the officer's shit off your nose, Gaston? <laughs> or even climb out of his ass? <laughs> uh, perfect throw? Well, I still did just about... Uh, something cool. Uh, extraordinary. Right. Was the demonstration it? Or do you still need something from us, officer? Yes, officer. What do we need from these gentlemen? Yeah, I want to ask, uh, you know who hung the guy back there? Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. And most locals? In Martinez, the union is the law. So can you really blame them? Okay, but they have a problem with cops? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. 
Do you know anything? If I knew, I would not be afraid to tell you. I simply don't. I am an old man, not a coward. The daily business of the riffraff no longer concerns me. This is a man with a lot of past, but little present, and almost no future. Oh. Seem to be playing in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Does have anything to do with all the bullet holes? Yes. It was left by heavy artillery fire. A crater left by artillery. But why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Did you use heavy artillery against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't so, Ew. and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. Let's take that. Uh, why shall? Because this place is a damn beachhead. I had to soften the commies up first. Beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. He finds your lack of historic knowledge troubling. A sign of mental deterioration in the preceding generations. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. Uh, sounds grim. This here is blood ground, where Coalition Boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got old René going there, like he isn't hungry enough already. That explains all the war damage. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of mm. course, they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? I don't think I do. I'm just so damn sorry it had to be the coalition. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains. Oh. I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned through Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Fussel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This what? is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. The fuck is a suzerain? The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? They've forgotten already. Soon, they will forget everything. Him too. Then he chooses anger over melancholy. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Can you tell me anything about this rifle? It's a Bell McGrave. 4.46 caliber, breech loading, Revachol made. Good weapon, accurate and reliable. This one's inoperable, 
The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? Uh, in the basement. I'm not surprised. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. Back in the day, everyone had something stashed away. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. These BM-446s are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. Fuck it. All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past and his old uniform. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Fissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip V before him. Hmm. Don't you mean Fissel the Fan? You do not speak his name, Craven. Although he was a clown. But he was our clown. Ours to ridicule and to mourn. There's something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. Thank you for your time. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. Mm. I'm, a I'm a superstar. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop, Dick Mullen. Salam Rocky Bayi, badass on the edge disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Here we go. Camera, lights. Action. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. Hmm. There already. Let's see if I can find a few more bottles. Yeah, there they are. More bottles. Now I'm gonna go sell my bottles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. How much money do I get? Do I get five million dollars? The tear machine stands in the corner. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're 100% sure you got special hobo cop money for that tear. At least 100% extra tear money. If the numbers on the machine told you otherwise, it's a lie. <laughs> Alrighty. I woke up. What, uh. Oh, there it is. Reels extra to the. More money for selling terror, learning capture the person six. Okay. Oh wait, uh, is there anything I want to buy? Like you that see raincoat. several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. Uh, fuck. Here you go. Raincoat. Cop coat. Raincoat. Cop coat. Raincoat. Uh, what's up there? A colorful display there, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love, alcohol. Isn't that a good place for an addict? Um, guess not, no. <laughs> Didn't mean to say that out loud. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health, but 
I guess you already know that. Don't ask. Don't look. Don't do anything here. Just go away. Get back to work. Do you sell any under-the-counter faces? <laughs> Intellect, physique... Oh, those are actually, like, good benefits. No. We're cold turkeying this bitch. Even if I want to win. Bullshit. Okay, what the fuck am I doing now? I need to pay for my damages. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Bartender Man. Let's do this. Can I help you? With that money I owe you. Yes. Have you got it? Yes. Well. Uh, sorry for the trouble. Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. He's not sorry about his behavior for your sake. Now that you have money, he really wants to make sure you're not angry with him. It's good you paid before 9pm, or your door would have been locked electronically. Oh. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. I'll take a room here too. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Another thing. Great. I love those. What's the door? Oh, yes. That door. Sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. What's behind it? No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's behind there, bud. Fine, okay. A little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So, I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though. Yes? What's this? The precarious world. Precarious world. Okay. How not to lose. It is impossible not to. The world is balanced on the edge of a knife. It's a game of frayed nerves. You're pushed on by numbers and punitive measures. Pain, rejection, and unpaid bills. You can either play, or you can crawl under a boat and waste away. Turn into salt, or a flock of seagulls. Your enemies would love that. Or you can fight. The only way to load the dice is to keep on fighting. Critical success and failure thresholds lowered by one. What does that even mean? Critical success threshold lowered by one. Critical failure threshold lowered by one. Does that mean I can't critically fail? Or does that mean it's easier to get fails and easier to get successes? I'm not, I'm not sure. Oh. Okay. Uh, it's this one. Oh, thinking about these gives me negatives? Oh. That's good to know. I guess I can't internalize any of these. Uh... Oh, wait, perception. Hmm, that makes sense. 
Hey, miss, can I give Hello you a pin again, back? sweetie. I hope you are able to pawn that old trinket. I'm giving you the pin back. Oh, thank you, dear. I confess I am glad to see it again. Even the lieutenant seems happy with this turn of events. Now, what else, sweetie? I gotta go. Honorable one, you have accumulated a substantial amount of honor points on your life path. You are a man most virtuous. Are there honor points? Of course there were honor points. Did you think no one was paying attention to all of your honorable deeds, honorable one? It's all the most we can do. Oh, the modesty on this one. Another ten honor points for you, sir. <laughs> okay. You are on the fast track to becoming one of the rarest, most revered of all police officers, an honor cop. My honor is my life. Yes, your deeds are spoken for you, honorable one. But to fully drape oneself in an eternal cloak of honor, a ritual must be completed. Even among the honorable, only the most dignified are deemed worthy. But you, I'm a little oh, girl. One, <laughs> have excelled in honor. Honor comes from deep within you. You need to bring the thumb of your right hand, your sword hand, to your rectum and stick it in there to form the Arch of Honors. I'm like I stick my finger in my ass. What the fuck? Most dishonorable are those who have known honor carried honor in their hearts, and then disowned honor. They are the honor fallen. You brought much shame on your family today. Okay. What the, f what the fuck was that about? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. This felt bad. I wanted to give her pen back. It's a nice thing to do. Okay. Map. I still need a map. The perception track. Okay, hopefully I can. I think that fucks up perception. No? Alright. Let's try this once again. Inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eaten tonight. Because it's nice and orderly. Fucking come well on. Palette, easy on the eyes. It reveals no secrets at this. God fucking damn it. 50 50 shot. You get it one of these days. No. No, that's not how it works. Just fuck me in the ass. Maybe I should have stuck my thumb in my ass. Fucking, maybe I'll do some good. God fucking damn it, I'm angry. Can I get this guy's shit? That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. No. Oh, excuse me. Do you have something better to do than lust for sweet syrupy rum and lemonade? No. The worker. Perhaps he's on his way. Okay, I'm gonna get me some pizza and water and coffee and soda. <sighs> Maybe I'll be a little less angry. No. Give me. Give me 10 minutes. I'll be right back.
Oh, God. Uh, that was a lot faster than I thought. Yeah, well. I did get some Marco's pizza, though. That was nice. I think I'm going to save Scum. I'm tired of uh, losing a shitload of goddamn rules. I'm fucking angry. Like, genuinely pissed off that it keeps happening. It feels bad. It's like, I haven't put the point into it. And it's like, nah, fuck you again. It just pisses me off. I know it's not hardcore. I just want to be able to make progression. You know. Then I burn a point on uh, a skill I don't even want to put it on. So then I can progress. And it's just like, no, nah, fuck you. That's, that's like one of the shittiest feelings. It doesn't, it takes a while to get a fucking skill point. You know. Do I have any like, things that can help with that? Do I have any drugs that can help with this? So what the fuck even is hardcore mode? I'll talk to the box. An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all... You ring the doorbell, but no one answers. All you hear is static, but you ring the doorbell. You wait for a minute or two, but looks like someone you hear static from the intercom speaker. It sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver, but isn't saying anything. Hey, kitty. You can almost hear them breathe. Hello? Yes, hello. This is Triton Peniel Electric. Have you come to place an order? Yes. My God. The lieutenant exchanges a look with you. Sorry? It's you. Oh my god. I didn't think I would hear your voice. No. Something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? Uh, do we know each other? Michelle, just please. What the fuck? Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. Of course I care. I've been going through some tough times. Ever since I came to work here, it's been different. As if my mind's been wiped clean. A spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. It's so nice. It's so nice to be able to finally forget. Forget what? She sounds like she's about to cry. Don't cry. She doesn't answer. Are you still there? Silence. The only thing you can hear now is static and waves washing ashore on the bay. What the fuck just happened? Another seagull passes by. It's I don't know what happened either. We should probably stop playing with this thing. It's a goodbye then. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Whatever she says, it can't oh, hurt nice. you. You're a different person now. Stronger. Healthier. Alright. Maybe not healthier, but it's a bonus that you've drunk so hard you can't remember any of your past relationships. Oblivion's the ace in your corner. There's a light buzz as you press the doorbell. There's the static again, whispering like a seashell pressed against the air. Yes, hello, this is Triton Electric. Have you come to place an order? 
Uh, there's some confusion. You got me mixed up with someone else. Oh my God. Here come the bad vibes again. Relax. Distance yourself from it. I just want to explain myself. It is you. My God. Wait. Is she... Repeating your words. Michelle. Just... Why did you leave me home? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. It's just gonna, this is a the voice from the intercom doesn't answer, but you can hear her breathing. Wind blows into your microphone again, crackling and echoing in the box. Do we talk? Ever since I came to work here, it's as if my mind has been wiped clean. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. Weird. Silence. Silence. Nothing happened. Silence. This button looks new, but someone has removed the name. Hmm. This button looks new. I wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't been connected yet. Is it the dice makers? Hmm. Well, that was weird. I don't know what that was all about, but... Fuck it. <laughs> Buck it. <laughs> Alright. If I have any money, I'm going to buy some drugs for perception. I don't even know where you buy drugs in this game. Who's got drugs? Give me drugs. Tired of losing. Give me your drugs. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all... A colorful dis Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. Damn it. What drugs? I haven't been taking drugs. I took magnesium. Some sort of nasal spray. Um, I know I'm missing something. Because I remember I got stuck in this part last time. And I'm like, I know I'm supposed to do something else. Hey, what the fuck is this? You're drunk and you've seen Sig Zero. Cigarettes would be good. Actually, I actually never got Sir, into smoking. You really let yourself go. It's a disgrace. But Coach Physical Instrument is going to get you back in prime condition. Even if it takes a million push ups. Forge me into organic steel. It's going to take blood, sweat, piss, and tears. But when I'm done with you, boy, you will be a master athlete. Wait, why, why piss? <laughs> when a man sets his mind and body on something and gives his 110%, he is sometimes going to piss himself. <laughs> it just happens. No shame in that. Ain't no shame in pissing your pants. I'm up and in, baby. Behold, world. Here walks a sportsman, hands choked and hair kept back with a bandana. The homo athleticus. I don't know about homo, but... I'm athletic as fuck. Uh, internalize? Oh, um... You know what? Fuck this thing. Uh, forget? I have to use a skill point to forget? What? Bruh. Bruh. Bullshit. Ooh, box. What's in the box? There are clothes inside. Cheap second-hand clothes. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person with no money. Economical, but also trendy. Look first-hand. Buy second-hand. 
Keep the economy moving. 72% chance you know, we should, it should work. Something cold. Hey, you actually did bronze. Fuck me. Synthetic and sleek. A windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind. Summer. 100% waterproof. And hmm. sport. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. Hmm. Yeah, Gotta prepare for springtime, right? You find your hat. The box. Economical? Uh, what's, what's that? And what's that? Well, what you got there, buddy? You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, I'll take years of therapy. To a wide, welcoming grin. The name Sileng is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! It's so cool. Everything's cool! The goods are cool, the customers are cool, the place is cool. You're very cool. Bang, 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 bang! Oh, you think I'm cool? Oh, yes! You got style! <laughs> you got personal style! You know what you like. I do. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. Don't be distracted by the flattery and funny man act. Questions. I think it helps with rhetoric. No. Shit. Everything's still cool here, officer. Uh, you have humanitarian aid stuff? You mean these delicious pre-packaged shelf-stable meal kits? Really easy to cook, no hassle, really cheap too. Buy some, try them out. I think one said not for resale on the package. No problem here, officer. I get all this from one of my suppliers, an extremely reputable guy. <laughs> oh, I like he's him a too. Good guy. I think you'd get along. I'll let you know the next time he's around. Interesting. We'll need more if we're going to pin this one down, he thinks. Good questions, um... though. Sharp eyes, officer. What kind of stuff are you selling here? Only the coolest goods in Revashol. I've got sneakers, speakers, extremely comfy pants too. Try them on right here. No shame, only freedom. Where, <laughs> where'd you get those comfy pants? I'm an entrepreneur, officer. I've got sources, <laughs> buyers, suppliers, distributors, manufacturers, wholesalers. All extremely cool and above board. Yeah, permits? Good joke, officer! <laughs> there we don't have permits. Just economic freedom. Take a look around. You glance around at the decrepit buildings, the miserable weather, the sidewalk strewn with sunflower seeds and a dust-choked air. It's beautiful. Beautiful freedom. Kim, is it true? It is, yes. Anyone can set up their shop whenever they feel like it. That's right. No permits, no bureaucracy. That's why this city and its law officials are so cool. What the fuck are we doing here, kid? If you wanted to be cynical about it, you could say we are here to protect the interests of property holders. I am not, however. <laughs> My man, officer, you make all this possible. Without you, this climate would be extremely bad for business. You're part of the Gossamer State. Uh, well, if I'm protecting businessmen and everyone else live in ruins, I, I can think of a cooler thing to do. Yeah, cool ruins. <laughs> I get to sell quality goods like these by cutting out the middlemen. You don't have to rebuild your house, 
live in a crater or in a tree? Where can you do that? Only here. Do uh, officers get cool discounts? No need for discounts at ceilings, officer. Everything's already on sale. Anything you want, 50% off. All right, that sounds like bullshit. <laughs> Anything for you. Uh, where are you from? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All Revachol. Very sharp, officer. I'm Serais from the Sigai province of the Serais Empire. The apricot suzerainty, you know? I love apricots. The apricot suzerainty is what the Sigai archipelago is commonly known as in Revachol. It's a bit of a fraught term, I'm sure you understand. No, no, apricots come from Sigai. My grandma used to grow them. But Siga is a shithole. That's why I came to Revachol. It's much better for an independent entrepreneur. Less laws. Let me Google apricot real quick. It looks like a peach. Are apricots peaches? Related to peaches, almonds, plums, and cherries are often eaten fresh. Hmm. Speaking of, why not support an independent local entrepreneur? Well. If it's for his grandma, you should buy a lot of things. <laughs> it's a white check, so I can do this again. What if uh, you gave me some money? Start with a little coffee, No shit. Then work your way up from there. <laughs> this is about business, remember. Hey, you seem like a really successful entrepreneur. Would you like to support a member of the local police force? Oh. Okay. But why, officer? Think of it as an investment. An investment? An investment. What kind of investment? The best or kind of investment. You could not make this about corruption and go with something even wilder. Hmm. It's an investment in me, a highly experimental human being. My risk for reward ratios are insane. I guess it can't be any riskier than speculating in exotic derivatives. How much are we talking about here? <laughs> One million royale, of course. That would be really fucking funny. <laughs> he doesn't have a million royale. How about ten? Ten real is a bargain for that kind of investment. You got it, my man. Nice. Thank you, bro. Uh, anything in this box? There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got yes. the latest style. These, those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for the show. If anything, these lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils. <laughs> a UV magnifier. These are all first-rate sunglasses. Premium design. Super material, very cool, UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. Drama. These are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. Damn, officer. You look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. <laughs> They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for... Two real and fifty cents. It's going to be very difficult for anyone to take you seriously with these things on your face. No, you are definitely not buying those. Here I am, too sensible. Are you sure? But they look so good on you. You should <laughs> think this through, officer. Shades of self-destruction. <laughs> Maybe we can find something else. Too? No luck. <sighs> All you find is this lime-colored cellophane visor. Produced by a bargain sportswear brand called Amphibian, apparently. There's a malformed green frog on its bent cap. Oh, that visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals. Bang, bang! Should we and be prepared for, for a mere six real? I hope not. You don't like it? Sure, Square Joe. No problem. 
Let Wait a second. Some real Perception? Shapes. Yeah, baby. Hey, what's this box here? Is this pants? You see two lowly, defeated speakers. Thralls. Slaves, basically. Perched atop them like conquerors surveying the land. A pair of found, durable wear sneakers. I can see you were tasteful luxury officer. Can't keep your eyes off those sneakers? I would like shoes that don't give me negative effects, culture. yes. The design is impossibly sleek and simple. A you futuristic see, silhouette with a sleek monochrome colorway. What's going to happen? Upper and a silver lined midsole. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Is he done? I'm going to steal the shoes. I'm going to run away. And then I'm going to jump, turn around, flip them off, and crash into another woman in a wheelchair. Different person, though. Those sneakers, mister. Those sneakers are the latest found sneakers. Super air, super fine, super... 50 super. real. Only 50 real. Only? That's madness. Reaction speed hand eye. Fuck, I want those shoes. Spectre These speakers. once respectable speakers have been conquered. Reduced to a mere prop by the indomitable found ultras atop them. A small heat emboss on the veneer reads, Solidarity aid from the People's Republic of Samara. The speakers themselves don't seem to display any magical qualities. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. I've already look paid off my, speakers. uh... I've already the paid off my $100 dollar debt. Don't you worry. Uh, I already looked at these sneakers. What about the speakers, though? These, officer? These speakers are Samaran garbage. I'm ashamed to even use them for props. <laughs> Don't waste your time on them. Well, now I want the speakers. No way, officer. These aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Low-fi socialist junk. I want them. No, officer. You're a high-class policeman who accepts nothing less than the best. Lucky for you, I've got the best on sale. Give me the goddamn speakers. Well, if you want them. But see, they are the pedestal for my sneakers. If I let go of the speakers, where will the sneakers go? I can't leave premium lifestyle sneakers on the ground. If, on the other hand, you wanted to buy the sneakers too, I could maybe throw in the speakers for a little extra. 50 cents? I just want the speakers, bro. But, um, I only have $14 redos right now. I already paid off my debt hey. like an hour ago. Psst. Psst. Hey, you. Who, me? Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. Again. Yes, you're ready to start building communism again. You've built it before. They've built it before. Hasn't really worked out yet. But neither has love. Should we just stop building love, too? Can't argue with that. So, what about all that communism you've promised to build? Word on the street is, you've woken up from a thousand years of slumber, promising to erect a version of communism many times greater than any attempted before. Is that true? I hook up there's word on the street. You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, <laughs> impel all people who have more than 25 real in their pockets. I don't have 25 real. murder all human beings, regardless of their political beliefs. That kind of stuff. Yeah, it's me. Funky style, very funky. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Fuck it. Oh yeah, get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Jesus Christ. Finish the thought, I guess. I guess I'm a communist now. Got all these thoughts that I can't think about. <laughs> so it's 
seven o'clock in the game. What's in the what's in the trash? What's in your trash bag? Take that trash. <laughs> About time. <laughs> oh shit. More trash. <gasps> Fingerless gloves. Let's fucking go. I don't know what electrochemistry does, but I'll just keep those on for a minute, I guess. Trash. Why are there why are there gloves there, but not in the trash? What the fuck? Ooh, health. Nice. Oh, how are gloves of increasing my drug addiction? Kind of fucked. I put on some gloves and it's just like, oh yeah. <laughs> wow, a very large red t shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other car. Really? Oh yeah. The print depicts a muscled man striding toward you, a giant sword in each hand, mm. encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him, other words, Hyeondal burning. I'm gonna. How much? Two real. No That's shit. Dirt cheap. Can you just give it to me for free? But why? Because I'm a broke cop. I can't really think of any good reason to be honest. Wait, I'm a super fan. No, then he'll pay, he'll make me uh, pay more. Maybe I could repay you in some other way. Are dealing goods. Not services. Minus two authority. Physical instrument and shivers. It's only two dollars, though. Sniff the shirt. Smells like worn cotton and a little old sweat there. Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. Sniffing is okay. <laughs> but please don't try anything on. You're not imagining it. Photon emissions? What is he talking about? Eh, fuck it. Welcome to Hyundal, officer. Now I have a shirt that doesn't make me look like a whore. Now I just look like a dumb whore. <laughs> oh, bad. Let's see, what's it giving me? Oh yeah, I bought this hat with the googly eyes because it gives me perception. A typical I'll try that again. street light sits among assorted floor and table lamps. How much for the street light? Seven hundred real. A bargain, Se I dare say. Seven hundred real. There's more like one in every corner. The light has undergone three transformations, and every transformation, large or small, has a price tag. What the fuck does that even mean? Well, there are the costs of removal and rewiring. But the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures. Which has adjusted its morphological field. The light became suitable for use inside the home just a few days ago. Well, why did you even get this? It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. Neat. The oh, boom boxes nice. on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped. Dented, they stare at you with the yeah, unblinking yeah. eyes of their tape reels. What? Uh, one. one especially catches your eye. Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boombox that says, Stereo 8 approved. Yeah. This is you. Gold and orange. A sunset suite. Just make sure it works before you buy it. You sure this is all in working order? Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech, found sounds and music from a variety of genres. Even yeah. though I don't really like music. Wait, you don't like music? How do you not like music? The fuck kind of psychopath? Is the Harmon Welshie W2, made in Vespa, 
designed in Seoul, plays all reel-to-reel -reel formats, 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. It's even got a little radio in there. Exactly, Lucid. You can't It'll trust people that don't like music. 12 real. Hmm. I'm just gonna buy it. And here you are. Quality sound reproduction on the go. Nice. You see now rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Try to find something pretty and cool here. Then use it to win her back. Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that say foul. What is this? Oh, that's the headless phone rider. There's been a lot of interest in that particular figurine. I had to hide it so it wouldn't fall into the wrong hands. He doesn't elaborate on these wrong hands. It's unlikely that he ever will. I've heard about it. I've heard the headless phone rider ride the headless bull. Yes, there are several competing versions of the story, but I believe this figurine is a more canonical representation. Fuck. The headless phone rider. It's an urban legend about a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a thorn tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. Okay. 50 cents. Bargain price. I'll throw in the tiny cap too. Oh wait, I need money. Sir, I need to sell you a gun. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector. Just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. Tell me, have you seen any trouble lately? I haven't had any problems myself. Though some of my customers have complained about inconsistent law enforcement. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Mm, quite the collection indeed. It keeps me entertained. He's well composed, but underneath it you sense psychedelic processes bubbling. Some kind of drug, maybe. You on drugs, bro? Entertained? He might be high. If he is, on what? Uh, yeah. hey Roy, what are you high on, bro? Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light. While the mind continues to race forward, lucky bastard, he's probably on parolidone. It's tough to come by on the street. What is that? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic what? side effects, and oh. it makes your eyes turn yellow. Oh. Sir, can you take off your sunglasses? So where is a man get feather these days? How would I know? There's a note of indignation in his voice. Interesting. Those triangle patches on his vest. You have a feeling they mean something. Like they're similar to the halogen rectangle on your jacket. Say, well, it's pretty obvious you're the influence. What's with the triangle on your vest? I was. I was with the emergency relief brigade. You know. After the People's Pile disaster. <laughs> Had to take Perolodon for radiation sickness. That's what you were hinting at just now, wasn't it? He's taken for mental and emotional. Not physical pain these days. Tell me about the emergency relief. We were an all-volunteer force. Self-organized. Tried you. to help the fire brigades contain the spill. On the patch, gamma radiation lines crossed with a red drop of blood. 
I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance didn't have the art to let it all go to shit without trying to do something to help out. There wasn't much the volunteer force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. That's fucked. Okay. Um... How'd you end up running a pawn shop? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. So I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said, it's... people, we just had a nuclear pile meltdown. I'm going to get as far away from Forberg as I can. Still in the same city, but... Well, God, it must have been hard to clean up all that radioactive There's a shit. reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened. And why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment. And early death. Cancer, mostly. And we knew all that was coming, even as we were cleaning up as best we could. Whose fault was it? No one's. Everyone's. Ah. So much bitterness. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor, hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? They built a... Pr they made a fucking nuclear reactor in their backyard? Jesus fucking Christ. I oh, like man. the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices, my man. Uh, should I play the tape now? Of course. It's in working order still, isn't it? Just pick your tape and set it spinning. It all starts with the tape. Let me have shit. a look. Uh, Anything fine. else you're thinking of selling? Uh, I don't think I really need a pen. Or a shot put. Uh... I guess I'll sell this. That's fifty dollars. Uh, chat. Do I sell the filament memory? It's fifty dollars. I could go buy shoes, and I could be like really fancy with the shoes. Oh, you know what? Fuck it, we. Oh. Eh, broken gun, fuck it. Say. Another time, perhaps. You got any of that psychedelics? Have you tried it before? It's almost like he's worried for you. The lieutenant steps away. Pretending to admire some of the knickknacks on display. Go ahead then, <laughs> he thinks. As long as you can walk straight, I don't care. Uh, I've tried pyro every. I ride the, I ride the pyro every day, bro. Every day. You look the part. Here you go, man. Yes, darling. That's the coalition government ordained parolidon straight into your gut. Not so sure about this. Why wouldn't I be sure? Because it's an anti-radiation drug and you're a cop. Not a post-apocalyptic scavenger. Thanks, man. Of course. Uh, I want to buy that knickknack. You see rows of toys try to find some... Did I mention that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? That was a very smooth salesman's grin that almost comes off as earnest. You should learn from him. Inspect the horse. Big men on big horses, clad in lamella armor and carrying flintlocks, 
The kind that would mow down a line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye. Who are they? Franco-Nigerian knights. I used to be very serious about these guys. Seriously? A long, long time ago. Fuck it. Time to buy some shoes. I'm gonna try that stupid test again. Give me your shoes. The speakers below are banged up and worthless. The Super cool! Now the premium lifestyle is yours, officer. The sneakers seem to vibrate in your hands with an almost mystical energy. The weather's got in The junk too. is yours, officer. Happy <laughs> listening! I got some baller shoes. Let's fucking go. I am. That is concerning. Yeah, well. I have a lot of material possessions. Soon I'll even own a house. Wait, wait, wait what? Plus one psych? Minus one health. What the hell is psych? Is that even a thing? Oh, psych. Okay. Neat. Stalin's rolling around in his grave, yeah. Uh, can I put a tape into this? How do I... How do we... How do we... How do we... I need to get a tape. Where do I get a tape? I need music to put into my boombox. What is that? Hello, sir. Evening, officers. A burly man hangs out by the waterlock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the waterlock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. What uh, what caused this wreckage? I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershell. The words Daredevil driver. Sound ominous to you. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here. Especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Can I have some salami? Sure thing. Thank you. It is salty. It is savory. It is <laughs> chewy. The hangover only makes the salami more tasty. Want some too, officer? Why not? Thank you, man. I appreciate it. What a cool dude. Eat a little piece of salami as a treat. I vaguely remember a video of a cat eating salami somewhere. Oh well. All right. I am. Uh, I'm a fake communist. I'm a fake cop, and I'm a terrible human being. What uh? What else can I do in this in this Stuck fucking? Stuck in the game? rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? In his eyes, yes. An our familiar longing, flecks of brown and gold. It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest, down the street southwest. that goes beyond the horizon. Excuse me. A flinch jolts his frame. The question has touched a nerve. Uh, you know, I had known logging for a while now. Man, I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know? Yeah. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way, waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, 
so far from home. Diora? Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other end of La Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. Can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. Aww. What was it like to miss? What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. No. <sighs> what about you, cop man? You missing someone? Is that what it is? This feeling? No, it's scarier than that. You're pursued by a hunter, smelling of apricots and sorrow, and the past. I miss... You know, I feel hunted. Hunted? By what? Shadowy figures. An ex-wife? Why did that hurt? Followed me into this world when I awoke. I think it may be a plane near Hunter. Yeah, it's a sinister presence that hunts me across all planes of existence. Sinister presence? Wow. That sounds really bad. I hope that doesn't happen to my marriage. Oh, your marriage is fine. Nothing bad's gonna happen. Yeah. In marriage, you never know if you're doing the right thing. I hope we're doing our best to keep ours together, but anything can happen. Look, man. Thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone. I know it wasn't easy to ask, so... I hope you find your way through your own troubles. Thank you. What a cool dude. I'm almost about to level up. Let's fucking go. Okay, uh... Equip this. Equip this. God, I look like a fucking Muppet. Can you actually shoot down the corpse? Because I don't think you can. Unless it's like a really, 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 really low chance. An inconspicuous pile. God damn it. So this doesn't do anything. That's a waste. Uh, bag. Boombox. Give me the other hat. Hmm. These are worth $30? Huh. Nice. I wonder if I can do karaoke. I look very cool. Thank you. <laughs> it's 1800. Still in eight hours. Uh. Ah, uh, you know, that's true. He did say that. Uh, do you guys have any ideas of how I can, like get to the Union, because I still haven't been able to get past Giga Racist Boss over there. And I absolutely refuse to acknowledge his fucking ideology. It's fucking stupid. I'd rather get the shit kicked out of me than accept that dumb shit. A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. The, the windows are clear. They've been recently mm -hmm. washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings. Stickers, insignia. The What's driver stickers? has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. A large metal pendant hangs from the rear view mirror. The pendant features a sun crown with wavy rays. Excellent. The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not ah. unusual in this part of town. This is blind. our guy. I guess Blanc's the tough guy. Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. I wish I could slash his tires. Here we go. Uh... Okay. We're gonna try... Perception check one more fucking time. 
I swear to God. Let me in. Fucking quick saving this shit. An Let me in. Conspicuous pile of the roofing material eaten. Let me in. Because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Really? What is this then? A tool shed? I thought I was gonna have to pry that open. Uh, ooh, a jug. Money. Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine, sweet amphetamine. Are those drugs? The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. Are you a really good detective? <laughs> Perhaps the police should interfere? Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However, see that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? Yes. Yes, you're right. But can I have a little bit of drug? No? Okay, no drugs. That's cool, it's cool, it's cool, 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 cool. Oh, what the fuck is this? More money? What's this? Okay. Money? Money for sweeties. Ooh, box. Ha <laughs> Fuck you, Giga Racist. I don't need your stupid door. I'm gonna figure this out on my own, bitch. Just hop down. Just hop down. Just, just hop down. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing ahead. When the wind ruffles the cloak, you can most definitely see a white rectangle on its back. It's a cop cloak. Yes, it's probably yours. Fuck. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Wait, 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 wait. Save a fair. Okay, what gives me save a fair? Shoes definitely don't. These pants actually make it worse. So I'm gonna have to free ball it. The tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM markings, is still caught on the railing. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance. Over the look in his eyes is a mix of the engineer-like interest and the wonder of a six-year-old seeing a that's, horse for the first time. That's a big fucking crane. Yes, that's one way of putting it. It's certainly an impressive achievement of engineering. But I digress. We were focusing on your cloak here. I was under the assumption we could ask the leader of this union to help us, or it could be that we are just exploring. He's thinking you've forgotten where you are again. You really think it's mine? The cloak? I do think it's yours, yeah. Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops, 
Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. Bucket we ball. God damn it. It's not that far of a drop. No, no. That's still too high. What were you thinking? Sure. Just be careful, okay? Looks like you almost strained the muscle there. God damn it. Maybe if I did some fucking drugs. Is there anything that can... I wish I could do that fucking drug right there, but I can't. It won't let me. God damn it. I gotta put my shitty pants back on. Putting my cool hat back on, though. Just in case I die. Come on, come on. Is there anything that'll help me with sale of fair? Drugstore woman, what do you have? A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles. No, I need the, I need the good shit, bro. Where do I get the good shit? A colorful dis- Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. Damn it. Basically. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. This is important. She scrunches up. Fine. For it doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here. Okay? God damn it. What do I gotta kill to get some drugs around here? Uh, I'm sober now, not of my own choice. <laughs> Hello again, officer. Okay, 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 okay. I don't even get a map. I need to get a map around here. Maybe the bookstore has a map. <clears throat> Book? The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring rows and rows of here maybe a hundred the display rack before you is burdened under piles of man from here down novels pain threshold fuck it nothing of interest oh. only god damn it anything here. shelves filled to the brim with crime no i need a map map the plaque on the shelf reads biographies of famous people trash several maps have been attached to a bulletin maps. board hidden inside the alcove the maps look old and faded your eye catches a map of insulinda a map of revachol and a map of martinez i'm sorry officer the map of martinez is the only one available they're quite valuable Though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. You seem to underestimate my resources. Yes, yes. Are you interested or not? Uh, yeah, it's always but... good to be informed of your surroundings. Blah, 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 blah. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Okay. Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de Songs Lane and Rue saint Sipar, over saint Brun and Martinez North, finally coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing. Although the map gives no such indication itself. 
For a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal and select the map tab. Visual calculus. Hmm. <sighs> What's that? Cool in here. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and by amidst the various books, you find the point of the book and many others on this shelf. Various. <laughs> Nothing useful. God damn it. There's gotta be a way to increase my fucking jumping skill. Because there's no drugs. And I don't have a level up anytime soon. Fuck me. I just want to get that body down. God damn it. Cam, do you have any ideas? Yes. Me? I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Well, I want to get to know you, Cam. Mm, that's a fair point. All right. For the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Uh, you're wearing glasses. That's correct. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this, but you can't quite muster enough testosterone. Just observing. I guess you don't need glasses, then. You don't like other people around here? That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul, so was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. It's a all. part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. You said making it sound uninteresting. I still want to know more about it. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seol. I'm a regular Revachelier. He's glad to have shut down your question. Tell me a secret? No. <laughs> Please? Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something <laughs> is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's <laughs> eyebrow. The eyebrow is exercising psionic control over you. Son of a bitch. It's like you're locked down. What's happening? Something the matter, detective? What's going on? It's like you're a puppet in his hands. God damn it. The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you what? seem to regain control of yourself. Good. The music got really loud for a second. What the fuck? Uh, do I have more empathy points to talk to Kuno again? Fuck, does Kuno care? Oh, I found your shack, bro. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was I closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? I phase shifted through the roofing material. Shit, get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. You can't do that, Kuno. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Is that my coat up there? Is it? You got pretty fucked. Kuno's surprised you've still got your head after all that. Thanks, kid. Whatever, piggy. I found a plate covered with powder, bro. That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there pig bet you'd like to ride the lightning too wouldn't you you feel tired and old but you could have that sparkle in your eyes can you get into the harbor from the roof of course you fucking can 
How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys as gimps? Just got a fly pig. I tried, but it didn't work. Kuno knows. Kuno and C saw you shit yourself. It's okay, pig. Not everyone can face the fear Kuno style. That's all there is to it, then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. You're into the tube of magnesium, Kuno. It's a vitamin, pig. Don't you know anything? You could use some. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you could use a bottle. <laughs> oh, don't teach him, Kuno. He's going to use it against you, Kuno. I, I use it all the time. I'm cool. You're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. <laughs> Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're going to OD and you're going to fucking die. <laughs> so the pig did. Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Uh, <laughs> cool pig head. I liked it. I got one too. What? Eh. What is this shit? Fucking on yourself. This is weird level shit. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? <laughs> Just confused the shit out of the kid. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno. Kuno. D blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's try this again. Drugs. Drugs. Give me the drugs. Alrighty. Run. Run, we gotta go to my coat before it's too late in the night. Uh, uh take off the pants. Do I have a hat that helps? Maybe that one. Fucking quick save, fuck it. Tarpaulin again with possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. Physical instrument, what the fuck is that? The tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. Um. Nah, fuck that. I'm. I'm using it. Nope. No. Nope. I'm good. I'm d I'm tired of this. I'm fucking safe, Scobic. I don't fucking care anymore. I need to get over there. This is really pissing me off. The top Let me over the goddamn with thing. Possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. Brother. Brother. I don't care. Don't care. Let me off this goddamn ledge. Let me have some semblance of power in my life. With possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. Fuck you, dice. Eat As my you ass. Hear, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Ow. As the concrete floor welcomes you. You realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert. I knew you could do it. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbor now. Kim, you could have just climbed down there the With whole your fucking feet time. Planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes. Fucking Christ! Goddamn inting asshole! Fuck! Fucking done it the whole goddamn time. <clears throat> Composure shooters. Uh, drama. Give my fucking coat back, bastards. 
Nice. It's actually pretty good. Now I look like a cop. I'm a cop. What does my shirt look like? Uh... What's in here? That. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone. Weird. Is there any money in here? I don't know if clicking on these bubbles actually does anything. Sometimes I read them. But yeah, it never really feels like I need to. It's just like little small yes. story stuff. No, I didn't try clicking on you. Always oh, in the fucking way, Kim. God damn it. Ooh, glasses. Visual calculus. Nice. On second glance. Someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork laying around like this. Let's see what's inside, he thinks. Open the drawer. The drawer opens smoothly. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data and the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol, Kuron, Coal City. It's Bad hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really make sense of it. However, there is a little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. It appears to be a to-do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes, special whirling borscht, water Everard's plants, sweet office floor, more banners. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. Everard Clare, probably, the head of the Debarders Union. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. Remember, Leo, all items on the, the drawer slide. Oh, that was. Kind of useless. Let's see if we can talk to the uh, Everett guy. Oh, I don't rem I remember this place is like a fucking maze. All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. How hard? Well, they went through six bottles of potent Pilsner, three bottles of Commodore Red, and almost four packs of cigarettes. It must have been pretty hard. Did I do this? Well, yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. Oh. Still like a play convincing me. It must have been an advanced scouting mission in the harbor. Yes, this looks pretty advanced, all right. <laughs> For now, let's just move on. Uh, what's in here? This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, René Arnaud. If you must. But please hurry, we are pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Give me the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, René, is dressed in a Royal Carabiné uniform. The girl is young and very pretty. René looks like he's about to smile. This photo must be tied to some good memory. Why did you take that picture of René? Uh, I'm going to ask him about it. You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but... Um, let's see. Aw, that's nice. 
The front of this quarterly journal features a large satirical portrait of the late King Frieza. From the sides of his head, a pair of white antlers spread to the corners of the cover. To your disappointment, there aren't any full-color pictures to direct your attention. Just column after column of closely set text, interrupted occasionally by little doodles in black and white. After rifling the pages with your thumb several times, you return <laughs> to the table of contents. The magazine is divided into several sections. International Development, Kunst und Kultur, and Local Concerns. Just inside the cover, there's also an editor's note. I just, I just don't care about the damn magazine. Where's my bag? That's not my bag. That's my bag. Give me the trash. I am the trash man. Move a little closer. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Alrighty, we're almost there. Okay, finally. Alright, I gotta make sure that I'm gonna ace the shit out of this. I don't know if I need visual calculus in this debate. Hmm. Composure would be good, actually. Composure would be good, I think. Fuck it. Take drug. Whoa. In your hand. Parolidon. The double rainbow of synthetic hallucinogens. Rare and gritty. A product of the age of atomic power. What a funny little cat. Don't let the scary medical warnings throw you off. It's an inadequate antidote to radiation poisoning, but a potent antidote to... Boredom. Mm hmm. The container is warm to the touch. Or is that just the anticipation? You screw the lid open and look. <laughs> a little slit on the side lets you just slurp it up. Slurp it aggressively. You suck a manly dose of the extremely chemical smelling liquid <sighs> into your mouth. There, it seeps into your tongue. When you swallow, it's already almost all gone. Tastes like a case. It tastes like many things, all melting into one conflagration in the back of your throat. As you look around, the world slowly exists as it did before. Only now, gentle flames lick at its edges as though it were a photo burning. I can't see of it. Of course, it's just a metaphor. This warmth, it makes you want to share your Discovery with Kim. This is going to be so useful in my line of work. 
I just love drugs. I tell you're going to be slurping a lot more Parolidon. This stuff is going to give you insight into that little flickering light hidden in all human beings. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a Parolidon button. It gives plus one to Psyche skills. Empathy, Suggestion, Authority, Inland Empire, Esprit de Corps, and Volition. This is good before rolling a white check. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. My magnesium level's fine. What are you talking about? All right, man, let's fucking battle. Before you is a walrus of a man seated behind a large desk. He looks up from his work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you with a mixture of expectation and impatience, well bottled. A typical power play. Wait for him to speak first, Show him you've got a backbone. Look him dead in the, the one good eye of this man fills you up without even flickering. The other, his lazy eye, is constantly moving like a goldfish in a tank, grotesquely magnified by his plus six glasses. For a moment, you don't know where to look. It is unbearably humid in the trailer. Beads of sweat slide down the man's forehead. Heaps. Dear. At first, nothing happens. His face wears a wide and self-satisfied smile. Every now and then, he smacks his big lips. <laughs> like a general over his maps, he plots his moves. Judging by the way he's licking his chops, it's going to be a good one. So... Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi, how nice that you found a moment to pay a visit to the Debardeurs Union. I'm Everard Clare, head of this little operation here. Please, have a seat. The folding chair looks like a torture device. Extremely uncomfortable. You go ahead, detective. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that name. I'd rather stand. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner as equals. Take a seat. I insist. He's trying to throw you off your game with this Dubois nonsense. Don't give him the pleasure. They don't sit. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage with any man who won't face me at eye level. Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume our conversation. Uh, then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. You can't... Don't give up, but don't leave either. You're going to have this conversation on your terms. You just need to remain headstrong. Remain standing and don't go anywhere. Everard starts whistling a little worker song. He really is trying to ignore you, or will you out of existence. Jabba the Union League. It's time to stand strong. Lieutenant stands right next to you, not showing any signs of impatience or... Don't boredom. put me in the chair. Don't put me in that fucking chair. I see you are an extremely stubborn man, Mr. Dubois. Yes. That ain't necessarily a bad thing. You did it. <laughs> this might help with us whatever comes next. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardeurs Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? Oh, uh, by the way, I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. 
You know Gert? Yes, I know Lawrence. He's a real character. No union man in him. A real piece of work, that boy is. With a grin, he points to the checker game. It's like you're on a game show. At least don't thank him for it. You can keep it. I'm good. Okay, okay. I respect a man with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure Ew. you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. I appreciate any help you could provide. Are you all right, Harry? You seem anxious. Don't be. Everything's going to be all right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, fuck. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. Don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. At least you're not sitting. Who does this guy yes. think you are? Ronnie the Rookie? You ain't worried about no lost gun, or unpaid bill, or forgotten name. You're the bad cop. You're probably more corrupt than him. Be comfortable. You cross your legs and yawn. The fat man does the same, sinking deeper into his chair than one would think is physically possible. He seems to be enjoying your little display. Good. Now lean in with some corruption. Listen, pal, we both know what makes the wheels of the world turn. That we do, Harry. Let them say what they will about you and me. We're both born fighters. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna point out the chair. Nice bit with the chair, by the way. Good way to keep your guests on edge. Why, thank you. It's always nice when a fellow professional appreciates your work. Bastard. That's it. Now <laughs> kick back and add a final flourish for dignity. This is a worm's lair, and we both know why I'm here. To help grow your horde. I'm not. Alright, uh, I can kick back and add a final flourish for dignity. I'm not saying I'm corrupt. I'm rational. This is the worm's lair, we both know why I'm here. To help you grow your horde. Yeah, that sounds weird. I'm gonna do it. You strike me as a reasonable man, Harry. I like that in a law man. Let's cut to the chase, shall we? What can Everard Clare do for you? I think we'd like to ask you a few questions. Don't you think so, detective? Questions will show him who's boss. Could you help me get a dead body down from a tree? You might have noticed there's one hanging on a tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my! Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt, a steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. And Jean, please take it easy with the race science. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race science. <laughs> 
You can find John Luke down at the gates. He's the big impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great yes. guy. Uh, talk about the hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martinez. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to help you like I'm helping you with the body. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. Open a few doors in my life. And I'm sure you're going to open this one with flying colors, Harry. <laughs> this really is very simple, and there's nothing shady about it. The stars aligned into a cosmic frown here. He has your fate decided. Bide your time, however, and let the stars continue their course. And that frown shall turn into a smile. Only if you play along. Whose door is it? Oh, no one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. Oh, what do you mean by weasel? A loud blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. I just open it yourself. Harry, I'm a very busy man, and more importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. I literally do. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? I, I don't know if you know anything about the hanging. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. <laughs> I know everything that goes on in Martinez. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our friendship to the next level. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the Union. Special operations. Hardened socialist. A real free thinker, too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. You're gonna ask how I got in? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age. The big man peers at you over the rims of his glasses for a moment, then interlaces his fingers and rests his chin on his hands. Anyway, I assure you. I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. I met Joyce. Oh, that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, very busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. <laughs> We're all just friends. We're all trying to do what's best for Martinez here. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you get that nasty body down from the tree. I'm not a jealous guy. Whoa, that's so nice of him. Suspiciously nice. Why haven't you let her in to see you? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. 
And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I find it a little odd. I'm just a nice guy, Harry. <laughs> I wouldn't be where I am now if I wasn't nice. Politics is all about emotions, and I want you to have positive emotions when you think of me. What happened to the last dude? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. You made concessions for the company in the previous negotiation. Why would you let an ally go like that? He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. You called him a slur, bro. Harry! I have little people in my organization. <laughs> I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Fuck. <laughs> uh, vanished under suspicious circumstances. Vanished? Harry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Okay. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Didn't mention a casserole there, but... Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew. Or a hairdryer. Or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. That much is true. His heart truly is in it. Though you wouldn't think so by looking at him. If it's spilled blood you're looking for, then there certainly isn't any in his expression or demeanor now. Uh, Joyce thinks she's being lowballed. Yes, yes. Lowballing, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. Mm. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. He's talking about Sega. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you one more time. It's per I have I no remember. interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. What Tell her fight? about everything. Everett doesn't mind. Just talk about my lost gun. Yes, your lost gun. Your gun will be found, Harry. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Could he really be holding my gun hostage? Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. I don't want to be blackmailed. Harry, Harry. I was only trying to be tactful. A lost gun is a dangerous thing. I can't have it around in my neighborhood. Kids could be playing gun roulette with it as we speak. <laughs> Teenage gangs could be arming themselves. Get a hold of yourself, Harry. I assure you we are working on locating the missing sidearm as well. The lieutenant is concerned about the lost gun and feels that the fact you haven't prioritized looking for it is unfortunate. It excellent, Mr. Kitsuragi. That's excellent news. Looks like we have a friendly gun finding competition on our hands. <laughs> I'm gonna leave for now, my dude. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Oh. Great, well, I get stuck in here. Yeah, you're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Nice. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. We can pick up where we left off tomorrow morning. Hooey. That went way better than last time. Also, I played this like two or three years ago, I think. 2022? Oh, I didn't take his money. He was gonna try and uh, use that against me.
But I already paid for my room tonight, and I paid off my loan. So that's all good now. Uh, let me check that. It did say something about the coffee table. I just didn't see anything there, is the problem. Let me check again. There doesn't seem to be anything there. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything there. Hey, bud. Oh, wait. I need to talk to Giga Racist Man. He needs to uh, let the body down from the fucking tree. Uh, I have no idea where I'm going. The controls are a little weird sometimes. It feels like I'm running and I'm not running, I'm running, I'm not running. It's, it's kind of awkward. This away. Then open the door. Open the door, Gordon. Open the door. There we are. Hey, super racist, can you please get the body down? Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let yourself go. Uh-huh. Get the body down, bro. So it was. You surmounted the harbor wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. You're so noble, Measurehead. But while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. That would mean you're openly showing the people that you're taking the Union's side. What would, or, Lieutenant, what would we this is the uncomfortable result of not taking it on ourselves. I can live with Listen me. to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. Yes. That is precisely what it means, Homunculus. This is not going to happen any other way. God damn, I really wish there was another way, but I can't think of anything. You guys got any ideas? Or am I boned? Am I just entirely fucked? Because I think I might be. While I take a sip of water. So good. Fuck it. I gotta work with the super racist. What a what a game. Okay. Cause I don't wanna I don't like being told I have to do this. Fuck authority. <laughs> I tried shooting down the body and that did not work, so I guess this is probably the only way. If it's gonna literally help me. I can find my own gun. Uh, it's fine. Babe, see that they stay here the whole time. There you go. Go get the body, you giant fucking dude. I wish I was huge. The woman's gaze follows Measurehead as he leaves. So, you guys are like cops or something? Apparently so. Cool. I like men with guns and power. I'm Katya, by the way. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Yeah. Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. I also wish I could see it. Don't worry. Physical stuff like this is really easy for measure head. Mental stuff, too. He's really spiritual, you know. It's late outside, isn't it? You guys must really like doing what you do to be out so late. Hey, 
Hey, bro. What's up, bro? The corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. Farewell, Lamb Sandwich. You are a union man from now on. I shall, I guess. Genuinely think unions are good. However, comma, this place is fucking weird. Oh, the guys went home. I can actually do the fucking autopsy, but I need to shove it into the freezer downstairs. Look at this again. There are several foot. Nope. Corpse. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pine wood branch. It's gently laid on one side. Beautiful. Mr. Measure Head has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. An autopsy? Yes. One. Investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are on number three. The fuck are they on about? Cops gonna cut his shit up! <sighs> yeah, we're gonna have to do it. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony Rony. Oh, Come back actually... later, cop. Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. Uh, forgotten what a field autopsy is. Eh, fuck it. We'll just we'll free ball. Let's get in there. There truly is a time for everything, even for yellow gardening gloves. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in limited capacity. Don't know what you mean. I mean when I need you to. Until then, I should handle physical contact, and you should take notes. Okay. In your paperwork, officer, just fill out the field autopsy form. <sighs> I lost my paperwork, bro. Now they only have one paperwork, too. <laughs> officer, what haven't you lost? I haven't lost my shoes. Good. Otherwise, you would only have one shoe now. I can give you my paperwork. There's an autopsy form there. Several, actually. But only if it helps move things along. Let's work off of yours for now. Right. The autopsy form is near the end. Hmm, let's take a look at the notes. You find a moment as the lieutenant inspects the dead man's fingernails. Just a few glances. The pages are filled with a bulky freehand that's nearly illegible. Still, you can make out a case with a curious title. The man with the hole in his head. Ah, uh, check out the man with the hole in his head. Hmm, trying to... Ooh, what does he know about me? Maybe you're imagining it, but there are some remarks in there, and they're not all negative. You're referred to as the 41st by your station number and and the 41st comes off as a moderately competent detective oh maybe you are a moderately competent detective uh, let's see what's about the case it's very hard to draw conclusions all you can make out is that he is in a hurry to solve the case the tempo of the handwriting says as much and that there are a lot of notes in there. Most of them are made prior to arriving at the scene in preparation. Eh, here it is. What? Open the notebook and fill out. The dead man before. stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. <laughs> it was all The bright camp. <laughs> red paper is covered in boxes and lists describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. What if it was me? Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with 
begin. Assistant. That's you. Uh, leave it up to The me. corpse lies there, indifferent to your retrograde amnesia. <laughs> the next box says... Coroner's case. KK57. Next. NA. Name. Next. Date of birth. NA. Age. Hmm. Roughly 50. 50. The corpse looks ageless, like meat on a hook. Race. Mondial. Right down. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. Eh, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Funny six the f male. Male. <laughs> Pigs could have sex. Right, fucky. F <laughs> Nor does he look male, with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Date of death. We're still going with March fourth, fifty one. Okay. What else? Nine. Body identified by, is non applicable. Ten. Case number. Is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503. At least not after the initial examination. A strange word. Treatment. Exactly is treatment anyway. Interfering with the body's position or wounds post mortem. How did you not know that? Aren't you a cop? You're leaving a weak impression here. Say something sure handed. Don't overdo it. It's okay to be unsure. Uh, name at least not after initial examination. I'm not so sure. Wait, wait, wait. None at least after initial examination. Sure. By his position or wounds plus harm. I'm not so sure. A silent nod. The lieutenant places his gloved hand on the corpse's chest, as if in preparation. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, mm. somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood I think the body was moved. Rosencrantz Row. Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Coudon. The day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Dawson. Hand extended. He approaches to make sure she is dead more than anything else. And so, all across Jamrock, Coal City, G-R-I-H, 42 deceased persons found today, 42 stations of breath. We should start the post-mortem. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy of paper tries to answer why. Experimental examination summary. Close. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. Let's see. Oh, see, it's happening. Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. The boots are ceramic, vitreous enamel. They are fused to his skin from blood flowing downward post-mortem. Removal of the boots is left for processing. Okay. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a national pattern. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a triggered mini. The deceased has a cargo lashing belt around his neck tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, 
three meters. There is a buckle on the other end, well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters, generally consistent with age, about 50. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature, below freezing. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. I'm gonna touch his hair. The hair under your latex fingers feels cold to touch, wet. Stroke his hair gently. The stench is suffocating. Strands of dark brown hair start sticking to the latex of the glove, like thread off a rag doll's head. There must be brilliantine in there. He's combed his hair back with oil. Adding the brilliantine. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs, consistent with stones thrown post mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. <laughs> In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. Right down by men for high velocity. <laughs> you get your mark. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the bell so we can get to the ligature mark. You've got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Good thing we got chain cutters. The hanged man lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Always good to think ahead. Now... We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, with as much precision as you can. See, my pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. <sighs> Not your pig, I'm cool. What the fuck? For a good spot. The cut. belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the east. The knot is the weak spot. The chain cutters fit in there. Steady now. Like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come loose. No pig Kuno, you are? You. You're Kuno's pig. Concentrate on the belt. Not on who is whose pig. There is no pig. There are only the chain cutters and the belt. Go. You jam the Fuck cutters you. right under the knot. That seems like a smart idea. Yeah, somewhere there. Already, they're buried deep in the man. A really, really bad smell is coming from there now. And some kind of cracking sound. Yeah, fuck him! Fuck that faggoty! Corpse fucking time! Told you my pig was hardcore. I should have a go first. I think I have a strategy. He sinks the cutters into the knot, preparing to perform the cuts with his elbow to his knee for precision. Snap. The knot is yeah, slashed. Do, Jim. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. Here. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck, on the nape. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia... No! <laughs> it's gonna happen, see! I fucking knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for. Ever since the autopsy began, the lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Does it look like he was enjoying his moment of death? Ah, yes, your hunch before. We can have a semen analysis requested from processing, if that's what you meant. Yeah, I was trying to get a psychic read. No, you weren't, officer. That would be preposterous. 
<laughs> Just write down that we request a semen, vaginal, and anal fluids analysis. The corpse with his pants down does not have an opinion on the subject. All he has is genitals and a deathly odor. Let's check out his drone. The dead man's penis is average sized, congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around the crotch. Right down. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. Huh. Last item, hands. His flesh is cold, icy. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from and what's your name? I'm from... I'm only fucking with you. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name is Il Corbo. What can I do you for, <laughs> Il Corbo de Cappadocia? It's good to hold your hand. Did you like it when I stroked your hair? I did, Kobo. I did. Reminded me of when I was just a small boy. Before this happened to my face and my body. You did me a kindness there. We should do this more often. Be close like this, I mean. Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Working so close to the fumes coming from the corpse must be hard. You realize suddenly that the lieutenant has been barely keeping it together, these past two items. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Internal. Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? You don't even have a joke. Nope. Muscoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hiery bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. You hear cracks as the lieutenant moves his sharp fingers inside the flesh, like the creaking of an old house at night. Yeah, jack that fucker off! The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Respiratory system. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received dental implants, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen, hemorrhaging present in mucosa of the lips and mouth. From here, it looks as though the clown-faced man is screaming. The tendons of his jaw are torn apart. Hyoid, ripped from the force of the lieutenant's hands. Uh, take a look. No scream, no sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again, straight in that mouth of his. Uh, we must go deeper. It's hard. Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat. A contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach and into your mouth. You're forced to swallow, just to keep looking. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. There are ancient mysteries down there, Kobo. Ask me later. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. Hepatobiliary, N.A. You didn't have anything? Ah, are you a hepatobiliary expert? <laughs> I don't think so. Neither am I. That's it? That's it. Okay. Same for toxicology and serology. N.A. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Gastrointestinal. 
digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voilà. Keep the What's next on the list? Description of injuries. Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling in the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. Uh, bite Head, marks. chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? Opinion, fatal injury. Uh, non fatal post mortem. Agreed. Next injury? Petusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. The perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post mortem. At maximum velocity, fucko! Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. <laughs> the lieutenant's admission has caused great gratitude in Kuna. He is silent with it. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath. Okay. Right. Next. Uh, I don't know what that word is. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Non fatal. Hmm. He is deep in thought, eyes fixed on the bright red ring around the dead man's neck. Why do you say that? I, I'm serious. I don't think the injury is the, the one that killed him. Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? Why were his hands tied? A big man like this, I would... Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Why weren't his hands tied? A big man like this, I would tie his hands when marching him into the gallows. Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrist. That part got blurry for me stench but you are right i was ready to call this now i think we should leave it empty at least for the time being let's wrap this up i pronounce this field autopsy over uh how'd it go it was a uh, an irregular field autopsy we did not establish cause of death which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy but personally i do not see this as a parameter for success we requested a test to be run on the genitals that was the regla. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. I will not hold my breath. We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given yeah. the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. Well, now? Now? Now we put him in a body bag and I drive him to Forborg for processing. The lieutenant looks at the dead man one more time, then at his notebook, then at the corpse again. He's thinking, did I miss something? You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Come on. You run your Fuck hands you. over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. The hey. corpse seems to yawn contentedly. As though it's glad you've run out of steam. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. I got a feeling there's more to this. Okay, well, we are in Livor Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination. And we need to do it fast. Alright. Hey, wasn't there a giant ice bear sarcophagus below that building? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think we're gonna stuff him into the refrigerator and uh, try again. Yes, absolutely colossal fridge in the shape of a bear. Yes. Now, I've rarely been disappointed by the size of a giant ice bear fridge, but I think we should still take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. Let's move. 
With every hour, whatever we are looking for in the deceased will become harder to find. Fuck. How did I get there again? It was the bookstore. And then it was downstairs. Don't tell me it's closed. Don't tell me it's closed. It's fucking closed. Fuck. Oh, it's unlocked. Oh, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's go. Let's fucking go. The bear's eyes are still glowing red, watching over all the ice cream wrappers hidden inside its belly. This looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious and cold enough, too. But the optics on this are awful, he thinks. We need to be as silent as we can. Shall we go and get the body then? The body do it. is heavier than we expected and stinkier. It takes half an hour to get it down to the basement. Then, ten more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. Beautiful. A dead body what? in a nice bare fridge. What? This is some of the best body's work I've ever done. <laughs> Sorry, my cat was meowing. Kitty. Really? You think it was good? No, work? not really. <laughs> Look at that. What have we done? We stuffed a dead body in a nice bare fridge. <laughs> this story does not leave this room. <laughs> this story does not leave this he room. He means it. He doesn't want to be the ice bear cop. Yeah. Why, kitty? Why? Did our best with the means. Yeah, I'm not proud either, but we did find a fridge. <laughs> this, this was our vision, Ken. If I were an artist, this would certainly not be my vision. <laughs> I would be much, much more conservative in my work. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands slumped. Running Wait. again. You Fuck you, game. It'll come to you sooner or later. I'm, it's coming now. Where's my shitty hat? You're gonna the come right now, corpse. Still glowing red. It's 92%. Sug my dick. Your arm reaches out. And your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, dead flesh through the latex glove. It's right under the palm of your hand. What is it? I'm just gonna stick my finger in this dead his body face, and see what happens. His cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a rubber spider, your gloved hand crawls on his features everything is silent all around fingers in his mouth the oral cavity is cold and moist a ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth lolling around like a scallop you're on the right track Open my eyes and look. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from his throat. And there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate, you see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep going. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. I'm gonna push my finger in. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth, right into his brain stem. 
Much deeper. Your yellow fingers slide into the remains of the limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. The onulations of the limbic system have ended. All is quiet. There's a cavity right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Ice cold serrated metal. Its edges cut right through the latex and into your finger. Fish it out. What is it? You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... Pull it out. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth. The garden glove is covered in blood right up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower. A blossom made of lead. A bullet. The we did it, gang. Falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, A non caliber rifle, some kind of brittle alloy, fractured on impact. Keep it as a gift. No, no, you deserve it. We can log it later. Nice. Looks like we need to add one more item to your injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft okay. palate, back of mouth. Hey kitty, hey kitty. She likes to climb on the desk. High velocity, <laughs> temporary cavity in brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Sounds like it. Opinion, fatal injury. Goddamn right. And one last thing. We can now fill in injury number three. Ligament mark. Opinion, non-fatal. Post-mortem treatment he's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death and the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact the living mark the fractured high bone is all treatment yes and the belt around his neck the hanging even dragging him to the yard all of it was done after this man was already dead dead daba doop doop why is that even there what i guess i'll click it Dead, 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 dead. <laughs> Holy shit. That's fucking great. Thank you, Kim. Dip, 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 dip. Dip, dip. I have had my doubts for a while now. Since I saw there were no signs of struggle on his hands and no claw marks on his neck. There have been other signs too. Small things. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death, as the perpetrators <laughs> expected we would. No such luck for them. We didn't fall for it, he thinks. There's pride in there. I think I need to wash myself. Oh, you really, really do. I'm <laughs> glad to hear you say that. Your room in the Whirling in Rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. The ball hold holds my answers. Yes, we should take a closer look at it. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. Uh, what next? We put him in a bag and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. The body bag should contain the odor for the duration of the transport. I would drive him to processing, but it's too late to do that today. I'll do it first thing tomorrow. No problem. One more thing. This was really good work, detective. The word lingers in the air Aww. of the basement. Far away, ice cream makers are buzzing and the sea wind blows outside. Detective. 
Uh, yeah, let's, let's drag him. All right. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. That kitty keep mowing at me. Well, I guess you haven't had much attention lately. I should play with you. Okay. So, we're gonna save and leave it there. We did some good detective work. We've done some good detective work, my dudes. Oh, fuck. You know, with how shit everything kind of went in the beginning, I'm glad that the uh, the boss fight with the, the, the large lad went well, and we actually found the bullet in his head. Or neck. So I'm happy about that, at least. Oh, I was... It got a little tilted. But things are turning around, so that's fine. Also got two level ups, I think. Which I should definitely come up with a different think. Uh, yeah. Let's do that. And... Let's do... Communism. And physical instrumentation. That sounds funny. Bucket we ball. Alrighty. Yeah. Save the game one more time. Oh shit. Alright. I'll head off, pet the cat, play with the cat, make sure they're doing alright. Thanks for just stopping by, my dudes. Hopefully we get this solved. Lickety split. We found out that the guy was killed, and the hanging was bullshit, and soon we're going to find out why. Why would they do that? But anyways, see you guys probably tomorrow. I'll stream around 2 o'clock again. If you want to hop in, that'd be great. Anyways, you guys have a good night. Wahoo.